Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Kohelet, the author of the biblical book of Ecclesiastes, reminds us that for everything there is a season, a time for every experience under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Ginny Klein passed away early in the evening this past Monday at the age of 94. She made an indelible impression on all who knew and loved her, and we will miss her. Ginny was born and raised in Cleveland, graduated from Cleveland Heights High School, and received her teacher's degree from Mather College. By the time she graduated, Ginny had married Larry Klein, whom she met at a fraternity party in high school. For two and a half years after graduating from college, Ginny taught at Gracemont School and then became a stay-at-home mom in order to raise her three children, Judd, John, and Jim. In 1965, when her youngest son, Jim, was in junior high school, Ginny began teaching again, first as a substitute teacher in the Beechwood schools. Then beginning around 1970, Ginny found her permanent place at Fairmont Elementary School, teaching in turn the third grade, the second grade, the first grade, and finally and permanently kindergarten. She retired in 1994. In 1996, Jenny's husband of 49 years, Larry, to whom she was devoted, passed away. Soon, Good fortune smiled on Jenny once again when she met Bob Wolf at a restaurant. They started talking and discovered that they had a great deal in common. They began seeing one another and traveling together. In 2003, they were married. I had the privilege of performing the ceremony. And Jenny then enjoyed a second wonderful union with another wonderful man. When I spoke at length with Ginny's family yesterday afternoon and asked them to describe Ginny to me, they came forth with a profusion of adjectives. She was, they said, loving, caring, generous, engaging, extremely bright and articulate, very verbal, and a person with inner resilience and strength, all accompanied by a ready and gracious smile. Ginny, her family went on to say, found every person with whom she interacted to be interesting. She loved to engage the people she met in conversation and loved to find out who they were and what they were doing. Indeed, Jenny always found learning about other people much more stimulating than talking about herself. Now, in my conversation yesterday with Jenny's adoring family, they returned again and again to her vocation as a kindergarten teacher. And it was in this capacity 
that Ginny made her most dramatic and enduring impact. Simply put, Ginny was adored by generations of children and their parents. Now, why indeed did these children and their parents love her so much? Because among other things, she took special care of the children, saw each child as distinctive and as a special individual, and she remembered each of them, their faces, if not all of their names, long after she had had them in kindergarten class. For Ginny, kindergarten was precisely the time when children begin to form lifelong friendships, when each child is filled with potential, potential with Gin which Ginny had and recognized that she had, the privilege both of engaging and of cultivating. Mrs. Klein was my favorite teacher, legions of her former students would say. And as it happens, I happened to have a conversation with one of my friends late last night, this friend who told me that upon hearing the news that Ginny had passed away, that he and his wife recalled the impact Ginny had on their own daughter, now in her 40s and with two growing children on her own. Ginny Klein was a wonderful example of the deep effect that a remarkable teacher can have and continue to have on the lives of her students long into the future. And as a tribute to Jenny's decades-long devotion to her students, Beachwood created a fund in her honor, the Virginia Klein Scholarship Fund, which offers aid to young people who intend to make early education their own vocation. Richly impactful as this thoroughly dedicated teacher was, Ginny also lived an active and vibrant life outside the classroom. She maintained lifelong friendships with so many of her childhood friends. And with them and others, Ginny and Larry, and then Ginny and Bob, would meet regularly with friends for dinner and discussions and all manner of warm conversation. And Ginny was always game for new experiences, travel especially. She and Larry were among the first Westerners to visit China. She traveled to New York, to New York City two weeks after 9-11 attending the theater and viewing Ground Zero. Indeed, again, in the words of her family, Ginny was a plucky person with an appetite for adventure. And Ginny was a devoted and loving member of her own burgeoning family. She never missed sending a special note for a special occasion. And she always entered a family member's home with a big hello, the distinctive sound of which I will not dare to emulate. And just Kate, take care of each other was her trademark sign-off line. Energy, ebullience, and an unselfconscious ability to communicate with others with warmth and love and devotion. These were Jenny's lifelong trademarks. And these were some of the many attributes that gave her a prominent place in the minds and hearts of so many people over so many decades. Jenny is survived by her beloved and devoted husband of 18 years, Bob, by her sons, Judd, John, and Jim, by her daughters-in-law, Cheryl, Christine, and Kathleen, by her stepchildren, whom Jenny embraced as her own, Claudia and Scott, and Stephen and Lorraine, by her adored and adoring grandchildren, 
Olivia, Monica, Jason and Veronica, Adam and Carolyn, Kevin and Kate, Missy, Brandon and Christy, Ryan and Carly and Devin. By her great-grandchildren, Brody, Alexis, Casey, Peyton, Calloway, Tierney, Aiden, and Cody. By her sister, Nancy, and by many loving nieces, nephews, and cousins. She was predeceased by her husband, Larry, by her parents, Everett and Ruth, and by her brother-in-law, Sanford. Ginny Klein lived a full and a rich life. She had two wonderful marriages, raised three fine sons, and lived to see the flourishing of her family well into the fourth generation. She touched everyone she met and drew energy and optimism from all the people she welcomed into her long life. Those who loved and admired her will never forget her. Zichrona Livracha, the memory of Jenny Klein will always be our blessing. Amen. I now want to call on several people who will describe the life, the qualities, the accomplishments of Ginny Klein. First, her son, Judd. Hello. <laughs> that is how my mother would greet everyone when she came into the house, when she came into the room. That was our mom. Ginny always had a big, beautiful smile with which she greeted every person, demonstrating her warmth, friendliness, and acceptance. She lived with a positive attitude, sharing it with others. That was our mom. Mom had the gift of optimism. She saw there might be silver linings, and there often were. She had a kind and generous spirit, wanting to be helpful to everyone in need. When anyone had a problem, she offered the advice, support, and assistance to make things better. That was our mom. She had the gift of a spirit of unconditional love, which was defined as embracing every person in the same way. She brought everyone she met into her world, giving them her love and attention, whether it was her family, a student, a stranger on the street. She sought to know and discover that story in the stranger. She had the innate ability to encounter people, no matter how brief a moment, and discover their background and possible connection. She celebrated that newly developed relationship, demonstrating her generosity and great love for all. Mom could make all people feel special and important. That was our mom. She always demonstrated a warm nature and celebratory perspective, joining people together. She was the hostess with the mostess and everyone's biggest cheerleader. That was our mom. Mom's a was a gift, gave a gift of support for the arts and culture, encouraged my pursuit of the arts, creativity, and artistic endeavors. My parents and brothers went away on a vacation for a week, leaving me at home alone. I had a summer job as an intern architect and couldn't leave. So while they were away, I took note of a tree in our front yard that had been dead for some time and decided to make a change. It was in the middle of our yard, and I took down the tree and created a concrete sculpture that I placed in the middle of a rock garden that I had built. Upon their arrival home, which was late at night, they missed seeing my handiwork. The next morning, it was noted fully. My father woke up and called out to me, Judd, what is this? With great displeasure, of course. However, 
Mom's reaction was, Larry, don't discourage Judd's creativity. However, as an epilogue, a higher authority weighed in some months later when the sculpture was struck by lightning and exploded. <laughs> that was our mom. Therefore, mom's unique gift to all of us is to remember the life she exampled in being an optimist, champion, includer, a lover of the arts and travel, to make everyone we meet to feel special and embrace each person by welcoming them, welcoming them into our lives. These unique gifts of her life and the lessons derived from it are simple, that they, we need to discover is how we can enrich our own lives and better others just from learning and connecting with people. We could make the world a better place by all of us choosing to live this way. That was our mom. Mom, thank you for your unique gifts. We will continue to share them with others and will treasure them forever. We love you now and always will. Thank you. Now the COVID app. One thing I wanted to share with you over and above this about the art and generations. My grandson decided that she needed to be recognized today. And she, he created a picture depicting her wonderful, big smile. So art lives on in the family. Thank you. Now I'm going to introduce John. Good morning. Uh, first, before I say a few words about my mother, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the home health aides who had been so devoted to my mother and Bob. They've been wonderful. They've provided support for a long period of time. I also want to thank the staff of the Maltz Hospice Center. They've provided wonderful care and support to my mom and family during this difficult period. But also I wanted to recognize and thank Bob for his dedication and devotion and support for my mom during her recent illnesses. And also to all of the family members, Claudia and the entire Wolf family, and for my brothers Judd and Jim and my sister-in-laws Cheryl and Kathleen, for all their support during this very difficult process. All of us here today have a, a, a different picture of Ginny. Some of us knew her as mom, as grandma, uh, others as great grandma, many as an aunt, sister, teacher, or friend. And I can't relate to how everyone's picture looks, but I can imagine they're not too different from mine because my mom could relate to everyone that came into her life. My mom not only acted, oops, sorry, Mr. Page. To my picture, she was a brilliant diamond because she had so many facets. She provided sparkle to those she came in contact with and cared so deeply for everyone. From our earliest days, my mom acted as a referee, especially between Judd and me and Jim when he was older. And I can remember many vacations that required long car rides in the back of my dad's Pontiac Catalina, which by today's standard would be the size of a small land yacht. We had... Uh, my dad would pack the luggage on the roof and in the trunk so we could place a big mat in the back of the car for one of us to uh, lay on. I don't think that would pass today's NTSB standards, but it kept us separated. And we drove in that station wagon to New England, to Florida, to uh, Tennessee, to Colorado. And my mom would insist on stopping to see whatever 
tourist stop was along the way. I could remember one trip to Florida in which it was so hot, and my mom insisted that we stop at Jekyll Island in Georgia and buy some towels and go jump in the ocean. But we spent many long hours in that car, and during that, all that, those trips, my mom would always keep us occupied with all kinds of road games and activities. My mom not only acted as a referee between the three of us, but she also interceded on our behalf with our father when we went astray, which unfortunately was frequent. She knew boys will be boys no matter what we did. Her love for us never faltered. My mom became even a different person once her grandchildren were born. With Jason, her first grandchild, she went out of her way to spoil all of her grandchildren. She would hope she would have them stay overnight as guests, and she loved ha having Jason and Missy and Anna and Adam and Brandon and Kevin and Olivia and Monica, and she loved her, her new grandchildren, Ryan and Carly. But I can remember one time Jason coming home after staying overnight and telling, my, telling us how she spoiled us by giving them chocolate for breakfast. And she always was trying to go out of her way to take care of her grandchildren. When the great-grandchildren arrived, she became even a little more mellow, but loving them all the same, with her oldest, Peyton, followed by Callie and Aiden and Brody and Lexi and Cody and Casey. But to me, my mom's brilliance shone through her every day as a wonderful, outgoing, loving person, not too dissimilar from her father, Everett Loeb. She was like a diamond with many brilliant facets and is a kind and loving person in so many lives. We will all miss her so much and pray that she could now rest peacefully knowing how she's affected so many lives in a positive way. And now, my brother, after I provide the my brother Jimmy. There's a biography by one of my favorite heroes, Jimmy Doolittle. It was entitled, I Can Never Be So Lucky Again. And while that was true for General Doolittle, it's true for me and the parents that I was born into and the family that I had. Um, I was especially lucky with mom because I came around at a time that there was kind of a confluence of circumstances in which I got special attention. My brothers were older. They were almost getting ready to look at colleges and go off to colleges. But mom was still at home at a time when a lot of mothers stayed at home with the kids. And I was able to walk up to elementary school and come back during the day to have lunch with my mom. And I could come home and tell her what a tough morning I had had in elementary school, at Hilltop Elementary School, while she served me chicken noodle soup and crackers with cream cheese and jelly, or if I was really lucky, she'd make her specialty, which was cream cheese and olives. I know it sounds weird, but it's delicious. And we would have those special moments, and I was lucky because it extended beyond that in a certain way. Um, it was a negative and a positive. My dad started to work as a marketing director, and so he traveled around the world a lot. So mom and I were often home together and spent time together just, again, being able to talk. And then my dad also taught when at night school, when uh, at college, so he was, would come home late. And again, I had these special times to be with my mom, to talk, to enjoy all the cultural things. And then my dad would go on an annual trip every year, and he would take mom and I with him. It was a trade show, and during the day, my dad would work the trade show and mom and I would explore the cities that we were in. It was San Francisco, it was Boston, it was Miami, it was Los Angeles. 
And we would explore them, and this was before they had MapQuest and Google and Sari. We actually had a map that you had to look at and the AAA guide. And we would find our way around these cities, and Mom was determined to see all of the uh, cultural uh, places and shared those with me in San Francisco. We got to see the Golden Gate Park, and, and I couldn't wait ultimately someday to take my own children to see Golden Gate Park. And then in Kansas, our cousin sent us to the Agricultural Hall of Fame where we saw the barbed wire collection of America, which my children are grateful that I never took them to. Um, we even would go to places like Independence, Missouri. We drove over there to see if we could get a glimpse of Harry Truman walking around his house because he was still alive and he would still take daily walks. I think all we saw was a Secret Service guy sitting outside the house. But, but that was what mom was. She loved experiences. There was nothing. Everything was an experience. Whether it was good or bad, it was an experience, and an experience was always something to be treasured. One of the trips we went on, we took a side trip, I'll call it, to the national parks. We went to Bryce and to Zion and the Grand Canyon, my mom and dad and I. And at Bryce and Zion and the Grand Canyon, we stayed in, in cabins. And the furnishings weren't quite the same as the hotels that she had stayed at with my dad. And she described it as early Salvation Army. That was kind of a little bit of, I think, her Ruth Loeb showing through. But, you know, she enjoyed it. She got a kick out of it. And we would always talk about how we had stayed in those cabins. Because she would always rise to the challenge. As my brothers talked about, she was warm and wonderful, but she was also strong and tough. She knew what she would want. There was a, a trip that my dad had, a business trip to Europe. I think it was to Switzerland and Yugoslavia for a business trip. And the school would not let her go because of some timing issue. And she was determined to go. So she left on a Thursday night, I think, after teaching, and she came back on a Tuesday covering two countries in Europe in a weekend. That was mom. She was going to go. And she was, I know some of her teaching friends are here, she was part of the union organizing of the teachers at Beechwood. And we, they would have union organizing meetings in our kitchen table. And meanwhile, my dad, who was a businessman, was trying to keep the union out of his company at the same time. But mom was determined, and she would help with those things. And I was lucky because I think of anybody in this room, I was the only one that actually had my mom as a school teacher for one day. She was a substitute, and they were never supposed to really have me. But one day, something got screwed up, and she substitute, substitute taught in Mrs. Sanders' fourth grade class, and I was dreading it. I was so worried my friends would pull the old phony name game on her even though she knew most of them, or that she would get mad at them for their hijinks, I shouldn't have worried. It was the greatest day of the year. She read to us. We had fun projects, and I think we went out for recess about six times that day. <laughs> and that's how she approached teaching. She loved to make it fun for the kids. I mean, I don't know if there are any other teachers here who have ever heard of who actually had a student bring them back the next year to a class for show and tell. My mom actually had that happen. She was wonderful that way, but she was interested in everything. As they said, she loved shows, she loved ballet, she loved dance. She would come to my children's dance recitals, which there were many of, and she loved them. And she cared so much. You know, I still think back the time that she took me aside when I was dating Kathleen and said, you know, you may want to think about, you know, maybe marrying her. I had already bought the ring, but I didn't tell my mom that at that point. But she was up for anything. She was game for anything. And when I was doing comedy, while she wasn't thrilled with the idea, she would come to the shows with my dad. And then when my dad passed, she would still show up at shows. And there was a time I was at the improv. And she said, I'd like to come to the show with some of my friends. And I was working with a comic named Robert Schimmel. <laughs> Somebody here who knows what I'm talking about. Mr. Schimmel was one of the dirtiest comics in America. And I said, Mom, I don't think this is the show for you. And she said, why? I said, he's kind of dirty. She said, what could he say that I haven't heard before? I said, plenty. 
But she was determined, and she came to the show. And when the show was over, she charged up to me, and she said, he was hysterical. <laughs> oh, he was filthy, but he was hysterical. Can I meet him? And she did, and she complimented him on how wonderful he was, because that's the way she was. She would embrace everything. She was a wonderful mom. I would call her a mom for all seasons. She was a mom to all of us. I'm grateful that she was and is my mom. I could never be so lucky again. I don't think any of us could. Thank you, Mom. Jenny's grandchildren, Jason and Adam. It's very clean up here. I'll be speaking today on behalf of my brothers, Adam and Kevin. Uh, Kevin could not be here because he is in Ireland and could not make it. Uh, we are truly honored to be able to speak uh, on at this day for Grandma. Um, she was a, wom a woman beyond compare. Her grace and charm were immeasurable. She was opinionated, but she never let that get in the way of her relationships. She was always kind, always outgoing, and always interested in how she could help you she just wanted to make all of our lives better. Now, she did not instill in her grandchildren healthy eating habits. As my brothers and cousins will all attest, she took immense joy in seeing us enjoy sweet and delicious foods. Notably, as my brother Kevin writes, when he thinks about Grandma, I think about the glasses of Hershey syrup, chocolate milk. And don't we all, Kevin, don't we all? In note, it was not a glass of chocolate milk. It was glasses, lots of glasses. So yes, Grandma, I do blame you for my drinking problem. <laughs> we learned so much from our Grandma. She was an educator by profession, but equally as a grandmother. No weekend with her happened without a trip to the Beachwood Library, the Natural History Museum, the Art Museum, or the zoo, or any other number of places where we were actually being educated while having a fun trip with our grandparents, and we loved it. We thought we were just having a good time but like all excellent teachers, she had tricked us into learning. She was an amazing storyteller, able to capture all of our attention with tales of pure naughtiness from our father's childhood. And she always told these stories in a way to make us feel good about ourselves because we were never as bad as they were. But also because she really believed that knowing your family is the, pa is the path to truly loving your family. And family was really what she was all about. She demonstrated that no matter what, family is not just everything, it is the only thing. Dinners at her home were always a treat, but mostly because she made every effort to make them special. She was always the last to sit down and eat because she could not let anyone at the table go without. She served us all to ensure that we were happy, and she lived for us. As my brother Adam recalls, Grandma's wisdom about who you are to others stuck with him forever. She told him, you only have two things in this world, your word and your name. Being respectful to the truth and to the people you love matters above all. And she knew, always knew, the right thing to say. And I can tell you that I have way too many stories for myself to tell today. But to, between the times I got to spend in her classroom as a young man, which inspired my own career in education, to great adventures she took me on, to the stories on the couch that she read to us after dinner in her home, I could not even begin to litany the incredible memories that I have of Grandma. But if there's one memory that did stick with me more than others, it was this. One day when I was very young, Grandma took me to lunch at Beachwood Place Mall. I don't remember what we ate. It was probably McDonald's. But I do remember that the entire food court was completely packed. There was nowhere to sit. We walked around a little bit to see if there were any empty tables, but there were none. But this was no concern to her. She just walked up to a table that was already occupied by another person, but had two open seats, and we sat down. I was concerned because I did not know this person. You'd think that a kindergarten teacher would encourage me to talk to strangers, but this was Ginny. 
Prior to sitting down, Grandma didn't know this person either, but after about 10 minutes, she did. And I have no memory of what they talked about, but I assure you, Grandma knew the person's biography, genealogy, and probably learned that she taught at least one of their relatives. For me, this was an eye-opening moment. We ought not fear those we don't know. We are all connected to each other in some way. We just have to try to make the connection happen. We're all friends if we try to make friendship work. So I hope we can all leave today with these lessons embedded in us to enjoy life, to be lifelong learners, to embrace family, to be true to who you are, and to love everyone around you. She lived these lessons for 94 years, and we are privileged to have been afforded the opportunity to learn from her. Thank you. Jenny's grandchildren, Missy and Brandon. Okay. If you haven't known already, you have heard stories of the impact that our grandmother made on so many individuals, but we want to take a moment to share some of our own thoughts and experiences of this remarkable lady. These sentiments immediately come to mind when we think of the person that our grandma Ginny was and the way that she chose to live her life. Our grandma. Our grandma was full of joy. When you remember our grandma, she would light up a room with that smile. Oh, that smile. We'll never forget it gleaming ear to ear. During her conversations, which anyone who knew her, boy, did she love her conversations. <laughs> but it was her smile. It was so big. She would have to pause and stop just to talk because she was smiling. Even until her last days, Grandma still had that big smile. While we were at hospice, the nurse came in and goes, I think she's actually smiling while sleeping. All of us looked at each other and go, yep, that's Grandma Jenny. I'll always remember that during conversations, there would always be these moments of silence, her just nodding her head. Because she would be taking it all in, just staring at you, gleaming with joy. She just didn't want to stop gleaming to talk. Our grandma was inclusive. She always welcomed people with open arms. Our grandma could meet a stranger, and within a few short minutes, she would know all about them, their family, and their life. She had an amazing ability to connect with people in a genuine way. It was always the more the merrier, as she would always include everyone and make sure that no one was left out. Our grandma, our grandma had a deep love for culture, the arts, and exploring the world. As a child, Grandma would call these times we spent with her and Grandpa Larry an adventure, a visit to a museum, a possible play, or a show. Going out for a meal was always included in these adventures because dining, of course, is the best time to have good conversation. We will never forget the breadsticks and strawberry lemonade at Olive Garden, the family-style dinner at Spaghetti Warehouse, even most didn't end up on our plate, the most epic adventure of all, picking up fried chicken in a drive through lane at McDonald's. Who knew? Looking back, these times were, had a huge impact on our young lives laying the stepping stones that guided for our respective lives and interests. The frequent visits to Health Education Museum and the Natural History Museum likely ignited my sister's love for science. Building bridges at the Children's Museum and seeing the priceless art collections at the Art Museum led me to my love of design, drawing, and construction. Grandma and Grandpa Larry traveled the world and always brought something back special from the trips, which that led to both of us being curious about the world and sparked both of our interests in travel. Our grandma was patient. She was never rattled. Her house was like a museum, full of precious treasures and artifacts, but I don't think she was ever concerned when we kids were running around the house. All that she cared about was the time that she had with us, which was fortunate because we sure knew how to make a quick mess. Our grandma loved to teach. She could capture the attention of her audience, probably because every one of her stories was told in a way you would dream and remember your kindergarten teacher. They would make you feel comfortable. They would make you always want to know more. 
Several of us have wonderful memories helping her set up her classroom. And I'd stick around and it gave me a head start on my education. After nearly three decades in Beechwood, she was a celebrity in her own right. We could not go anywhere in Beechwood, mall, pool, library, where she wasn't instantly recognized and she never forgot a student. The countless times we heard, oh my, you're Ginny Klein's grandchild? She was the best kindergarten teacher. She made an impact in the lives of three generations of Beechwood students and watched the formation of lifelong friendships in our classroom. Our grandma had an undying love and devotion for our family. Holidays and family dinners were beyond important to her. She cherished those times with us. Of course, we fondly, re fondly remember the holiday briskets, the table arrangements, and the se seating name tags, set up strategically to place certain kids in certain seats to try to limit the chaos. But we were always really good about rearranging those name tags. We tried to convince her, Grandma, this is where you put us. She would always go along with it, probably because she just loved seeing us together. Even though she knew deep down the chaos was inevitable, especially with Adam and I as young kids. The most impressive thing that she did was connect members of our extended family so well. Even though we are all spread out all over the country, social media has allowed us to stay connected easily, but in the past, it was Grandma Ginny. Our grandma was a role model that you would always want to emulate. The wonderful qualities of grandma that have mentioned and molded us into the adults we are today. Thank you, grandma, for guiding us to be who we are even without us knowing it. We love you and we will forever miss you, but we will forever know you are always smiling and gleaming down on us with that signature smile as you continue to watch us grow. We love you. Jenny's grandson, Ryan. Twenty years ago, my grandfather, Bob, who my sister and I call Opa, and I will refer to him as such, uh, moving forward, met Ginny for the first time. Right from the start, Ginny took in my twin sister Carly and I, who were seven years old at the time, as if we were her own grandchildren. When we were young kids and still getting to know Ginny, she used every ounce of her personality and her experience as an educator to find ways to connect with us. As I reflect on those early years now, I have a greater appreciation for everything she was doing. Ginny was an amazing teacher of young minds and took great pride in connecting with every student in her career. Now, I am currently student teaching and will be a teacher next fall myself, following in her footsteps. Although I never knew her as a teacher, I can now understand what made her so special to all of her students as I think about how determined she was to find ways to connect with my sister and I. In those early years, we often played Uno as a family when Opa and Ginny came over. Ginny understood that by giving me a special job, she was making me feel important. This special job was letting me teach her to play Uno during the games every time, probably a hundred times at least. Either Jenny was a terrible student or a very loving and kind grandmother, and I am assuming the latter. She also knew how important Harry Potter was to me in those early years. And although today I know she only read through the first two books once or twice, she found ways to ask me lots of questions to lead me in conversation about something I cared so much about as another way to build our relationship. Ginny was a constant presence in our lives. 
never missing a family dinner or party, being at every band concert, school presentation, games, and anything else we had going on right there alongside Oatpot. She loved taking us to the Beachwood pool and then the pool at their condo once they moved. She went with us to museums, amusement parks, movies, shows, hosted us in Florida many times, and even took my whole family to Alaska to celebrate our high school graduation, where we had so many wonderful memories traveling around, staying up late at the buffet, and laughing about the strangest things like when we learned about what lemmings were. She always took an interest in my life, asking me about anything going on and any changes every time I saw her, and took great pride in both of our accomplishments. Most importantly, she and Opa were partners through their golden years, taking care of each other and keeping each other busy and active, always finding something new to enjoy doing together. The love they had for each other was so clear and so strong in everything they did for each other through their whole 20 years together. The whole wolf side of the family was so fortunate to have Ginny in our lives for so long, and we are so thankful to have been a part of her wonderful family and for Ginny and all of the Kleins welcoming us and embracing us for all that time. She was an awesome support to all. She also, uh, I also want to say on behalf of my sister Carly, who is with us virtually but couldn't join in person, that she felt it was a gift to be able to grow up with Ginny in her life and will always treasure the adventures she took us on from the Amish country all the way to the beaches in Florida. We both thank you, Jenny, for everything you did to support us over the last 20 years, for loving us so devotedly, and for making us truly your own grandchildren. Thank you for inspiring me to hopefully live up to your legacy in my future as a teacher. I can only hope to have half the impact on the lives of my students as you did on yours. I'll miss your bright, kind smile and the cheery and excited hello every time I walked in to visit. Thank you again for all of your love. We love you. There are stars up above, so far away we only see their light. Long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us as we live our days. These are the ways we remember, we remember as we live our days. These are the ways we remember, we remember. Yesh kochavim sheora magia arza, raka asher hemats mama vdu venam. Yesh anashim sheziv zichra meir, kach asher hemats mama nam. Od betocheinu, orot elaham avikim. Bicheshkat halayil, heim heim shemarim la adam et haderech, et haderech. As we live our days, these are the ways we remember. We remember. We remember. We remember.
O God of life, amid the ceaseless tides of change which sweep away the generations, your love remains to comfort us and to give us hope. Around us are life and death, decay and renewal, the flowing rhythm that all things obey. Our life is a dance to a song that we cannot hear. Its melody courses through us for a little while, then it seems to cease. Whence the melody and whither does it go? In darkness as in light, we turn to you the source of life and the answer to all of life's mysteries. Will you please rise now for the El Mole Rachamim? El Mole Rachamim, Shochin Bam Romim, Am Semenu Chanu Chanat Hachat Kamfech Hashchina, Mimalot Kidoshim Utorim, Kizohar Arakia Mazirim, Et Nishmat Yakirenu, Shahal Chale Olama, Megan Eden Tehe Menu Chata. Anna bahara hami mastireha, biseiter kinafacha leolamim, vititror vitror achayim et nishmata. Adonai huna chalata, vitanuach bishalom, al mishkava, minomar. Amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Virginia. Jenny Loeb Klein Wolf, our loved one who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in the shadow of your wings and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace and let us say together, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This concludes our service as we've gathered together to celebrate the life of a remarkable woman. Once again, on behalf of the family, we so much appreciate your presence here with us. Your presence offers them a great deal of comfort and support.